Hey everyone, welcome to Infinite Realms, and I did not intend to do a part two, but this story keeps going and going and going and going. I'm of course talking about the Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast controversy over the open, open gaming license. So, it, it's, it, it is really hard to get ahead of this and to even keep up with it. So, I'm going to run through a few things and make some wise ass remarks while I'm doing it. And uh, you guys uh, you know, can just follow along. First up is uh, oh, D&D Shorts uh, had this which uh, supposedly comes from a, a Wizard of the Coast employee. So um, yeah. Anyway, this is in response to everything that's going on this past week and a half. It's been a week and a half since all this started. Um, currently, Wizard of the Co Coast are looking at uh, delaying the rollout of the open gaming license changes due to backlash. You think? Their decision making is based entirely on the pro provable impact of their bottom line. Duh! That's That's corporate America for you. Specifically, they are looking at um, D and D Beyond subscriptions cancellations is the quickest financial data they currently have. Which, from all reports, a lot of people have canceled them. And finally, they are hoping that the community forgets, moves on, and can still push. They can still push this through. None of which is surprising in the least. That sounds like Hasbro right there. They screw up. They keep pushing through. They, they'll try a couple other things. Does this sound like the HasLab to you from the Ghost Rider? Uh, for you action figure guys. I mean, you know. Like, okay, well, well, we'll try doing this and this. We'll, we'll just act like it never happened. Even though there's a big post on the Hasbro Pulse that it happened. So, uh, the, the line that is getting people in this, and you can freeze this uh, screen and, um, you know, read this over and it's entirely if you want. I don't think it's that important to read the whole thing because, um, again, you know, I mean, it's all, if you've had to deal with Hasbro, at all this is all this none of this is surprising but I was really surprised by the reaction to uh, you know the managers uh, this line you know I've never heard management refer to customers in a positive manner their communication gives me the impression they see customers as obstacles between them and their money and this shocks you why exactly I don't know. Maybe us in the action, maybe the action figure world is a little more used to this because you know they're always trying to separate us from our money. Let's face it, and they're trying to make excuses to separate us from our money. They buy content creators. And yeah, I'm blatantly saying that. I, they, they, there are content creators who are on the payroll. It's pretty obvious if you look at it. It's very obvious. So, you know, take that for what you will. I mean, we've gotten used to this kind of thing, and we know it. Most of the time, we just accept it and try to, you know, do what we want to do without giving too, too much to the evil dragon. And when I say evil dragon, I mean Hasbro. But, again, I was kind of shocked that the, the, the people were actually shocked by that. It didn't shock me in the slightest. I was just like, yeah, that's... Uh, Hasbro for you. So, in the meantime, <laughs> Paizo announces something that um, really <laughs> kind of blew the doors off this whole controversy yesterday. Um, I, I love this, how it opens. For this last several weeks, as news of the Wizard of Coast's new version of the open gaming license began circulating, among publishers and social media gamers across the world have been asking Paizo what Paizo plans to do in light of Wizards of Intention to deauthorize the OGO 1.0A. And I love how that starts with, for the past several weeks. In other words, Hasbro, you, Wizards, you've had time to respond. 
By the way, I hate when people call Wizards of the Coast Watsy. I'm not going to do that except for reference right there. And so this is a very long uh, post, but it's an important one. You know, it explains how uh, Wizards of the Coast got with uh, got with Azura Law, who um, they're an intellectual property law firm, and was the was the attorney came up with the legal frame framework of the OGL itself, um, and they worked with Brian Delancey, who conceived of the OGL in the first place. Paizo says that they do not believe that the OGL one A can be disauthorized ever. It's, I mean, you got a law firm saying this, dude. Uh, I mean, they're backing up what Paizo is saying according to what I'm reading there, and, and you know that that. That kind of makes sense because I can remember civics class back when they taught civics. How old am I? They were talking about laws and how they're being retroactive. And you can't do a retroactive law. Um, you can only do the law from that point it's passed. Now, that, now, when I say that, I'm not saying I'm a legal expert or anything, but I do remember that being told, being taught to me um, you know, a long, long, long time ago. I, now, you know, interpretation of the law is a different thing. You can interpret the law, but you can't uh, change the law. Now, laws can be interpreted differently. Obviously, that's why you have Supreme Court cases getting overturned, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but you know, you, with very clear, you know, I, it is one thing that really stuck with me for a long time is that when the law gets can't, you know, in other words, you can't get arrested for um, speeding. 55 because you did it last week before the speed limit sign changed right you know I mean that's the simplest example I can come up with uh, but yeah the open gaming license uh, my first thought on the open gaming license was that you know you can't retroactively say it's now under this new license I, and there's more to back this up in a minute but I will I will I'll, I'll get into that in just a second one of these big ones is that uh, there's a line here that says, by the time we went to work on Pathfinder 2nd Edition, Wizards of the Coast Open Gaming content was significantly less important to us. And our designers and developers wrote the new edition without using Wizards, of, Wizards copyright expressions of any of the game, well, expressions of any of the game's mechanics. We still published under the OGL. The reason was no longer to allow Paizo to use Wizards of the Coast expressions, but to allow other companies to use our expressions. And, I mean, they're implying there that, you know, we didn't do that for so that we could publish for Wizards of the Coast. We just didn't make you guys comfortable. So, what they're basically doing is coming up with the Open Creative License, or ORC License. And what is kind of really cool in this is that in addition paizo cobalt press chaosism legendary games and a growing list of publishers have already agreed to participate in the open gaming license create open open rpg creative license and in the coming days we hope and expect to add substantially to this group so they've already got a big group of people under them um <laughs> And, you know, here's the big thing. And I thought this was really interesting. They were just like, the orc will not be owned by Paizo. Paizo. It will not be owned by any company that makes money publishing RPGs. Azura Law's ownership of the process and stewardship should allow safe harbor against any companies being bought, sold, or changing management in the future or attempting to rescind rights, nullify sections of the license. Ultimately, we plan to find a nonprofit with a history of open source values to own this license. And there you go. Open source. And of course, you know, they say very blunt, bluntly, we're still publishing Pathfinder and Starfinder as they should. The second edition of Pathfinder does not borrow from D and D it's, um, I mean, there's some mechanic stuff there, but you can't copyright mechanics. It's uh, what someone explained to me is, you know, you can make a game like Monopoly, has all the mechanics of Monopoly. 
you just can't have boardwalk and park place so that's you know just something to keep in mind so yeah this is almost like a real middle finger to uh wizard of coast and hasbro <laughs> it's like nah nah you're not you're not you're not fooling us we'll do it our own way um and <laughs> That's a, a brilliant PR move after all the crap that's been going on in the past week and all the leaks and all this stuff. I, I just think it's brilliant. So then, after all that, after all this controversy, after all this junk, today, today, we get on D&D Beyond... So today, after all that, we get an update on the open game license, OGL, by D&D Beyond staff. Oh boy. Let us partake of this nice little post. When we initially conceived of revising the OGL, it was with three major goals in mind. Of course, because you have to have three goals, that makes it sound official, right? First, we wanted the ability to prevent use of DNA content from being included in hateful and discriminatory, discriminatory, pro, pro, uh, discriminatory projects. Yeah, okay. Um, that sounds good. Second, we wanted to address those attempting to use DD in Web3, blockchain games, and NFTs by making it clear that OGL content. It was intended for tabletop role game, gaming content like campaigns, modules, and supplements. Really? Defending against NFTs? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> NFTs. Of all the things, it's like, we're going to stop the NFTs from being able to do their thing. <laughs> I mean, wow. And third, we wanted to ensure that the OGL is for the content creator, the home brewer, the aspiring designer, our players, our community, not major corporation to use as their own commercial and promotional purpose. Yet you had language in there that was about, you know, major corporations to use for their own commercial and promotional purposes. By saying you were going to take people's content away from them. Then you could use it at any time. Without paying royalties. Okay. Good for you, Open Gaming License Post. Driving these goals were two simple principles. One, our job to be good stewards to the game. And two, OGL exists to the benefit of the fans. Nothing about these principles has wavered for a second. Really? Hasn't? It wavered quite a bit from what we've seen. And this is the part that kind of made me go, what? That was why our early drafts of the OGL included provisions they did. That draft language was provided to content creators and publishers to get their feedback to be considered before anything else was finalized. Then why didn't you say that a week and a half ago? They could have just said that and it would have brushed everything over. I mean, yeah, it's a draft. Oh, it looks terrible. You're right. That's, you know, um, that's not really good language. We're trying to get some feedback on it because we don't like it. So, is that not simple? Oh, wait, this is Hasbro. Okay. In addition to language allowing us to address discriminatory and hateful con conduct and clarifying what types of OGL owners, our drafts included a royalty language designed to apply to large corporations attempting to use OGL content. It was never intent to impact the vast majority of the community. Okay, yeah, they're talking about the 25% royalty. 
something I found out about that too that was gross not net so yeah Paizo would have an issue there um, I mean with that that would uh, that would impact them a lot so you know why they gave that big FU a little while ago because they would have been hurt uh, but they're not a they're not a big corporation either. I mean, they're a big company, but they're not a big corporation. Uh, however, it is clear from their reaction, we rolled a one. Ah, oh, let's use gamer, uh, gamer lingo just to make sure that we understand. You know, I mean, and, and if you're an action figure guy, do you, uh, do you standing outside of this situation, do you see Hasbro's? fingerprints all over this because if you stand away from it as an action figure guy you're less emotionally involved and you see it for what it is they're trying to relate to you in some way it has become clear it's no longer possible to fully achieve those goals while still staying true to our principles isn't it um Paizo did it I'm just saying go read the orc Paizo did it Go read all the stuff about the orc. Paizo did it. Yeah, it's called getting a lawyer to help you. The next OGL will re contain the provisions that allow us to protect and cultivate the inclusive environment we are trying to build and specify that it covers the content for tabletop RPGs. This means that other expressions such as educational and charitable campaigns, live streams, cosplay, da da da, will remain unaffected. Critical role is safe. That's nice to know. What it will not contain is any royalty structure. Now this is interesting considering there was another leak and said they were going to have an FAQ uh, probably Monday. It was supposed to be today but it's going to be Monday and it actually does have a royalty structure and they changed it to 20%. But there's a royalty structure in it it will also not include the license back provision from some people that were afraid that it means for us to steal work really you sure about that because you know I'm, I'm sorry after reading this I mean it just oh we were just throwing a draft out there <laughs> yeah I mean I don't believe it was a draft I'm sorry that thought never crossed our mind then why did you have it in there I mean it very clearly stated it and that's another thing the thought never crossed our minds you ever notice that when people are trying to say that when they're caught doing something they go that thought never crossed my mind no never under the new OGL, you will own the content you create. Well, yeah, the other the OGL said that you own the content you create. It just said they can take it and use it any way they want. So that still didn't, that doesn't change anything. That was what people were upset about, was that they could take your content. And, oh, the license back language was intended to protect us and our partners from creditors who incorrect, incorrectly allege that we steal their work simply because of coincidental similarities. Don't we have all those disclaimers that anything in this film is purely that is related to facts is purely coincidental? I mean, do we even have that on movies that are true stories? I mean, I thought we did, and I thought that's why, and so again the movie industry has figured this one out as we continue to invest in the game that we love and move forward with partnerships in film television and digital games yeah about that um okay the films uh they pretty well cut shut down the hasbro studio which its first movie was going to be dungeon the dragons uh the one with uh, chris pine or chris was Chris Pine or Chris Pratt or Chris was Chris was it damn anyway one of the many Chris's I think it's the one that's not been in Marvel that was going to be their first movie 
and apparently it's so bad they actually shut down the film studio so i don't know why they're saying film and television because that's already shut down but to notice the digital games which is huh do you notice everybody in, in wizards of the coast used to work for digital companies now i realize that's hard to it's hard to swing its cat anymore without hitting a digital company but it seems odd that all these guys got uploaded <laughs> uploaded pardon the pun uploaded right before this crap happened interesting uh, you can go look into that um, you know people were screaming about it back then that there was something going on with this and yeah uh, the new OGL will contain provisions to address that risk but we would do so without the license back and without suggesting that we have rights to content you create last damn line of the paragraph they put this up so we're so serious about it we're going to put it in the last line of the paragraph <laughs> a couple of last thoughts first we will not be able to release the new OGL today because it doesn't exist because we need to make sure we get it right but it's coming I'm sure it is and it's going to be a big chode on everybody in D&D &D. yes I did a Marvel Legends reference there second you're going to hear a lot hear people say that they won and we lost because making our voices heard forged, uh, forced us to change plan those people will only be half right they won and so did we what <laughs> the fuck kind of half okay I have to admit I hadn't read this part now what the fuck kind of half made language is that <laughs> oh <God. laughs> Holy shit. People are going to say we they won and we lost. But no, we all won. No, you didn't, you stupid asses, because you're still in business. And you're still doing your shit. Oh, God. But you lost a lot of revenue doing this. And I don't think they're really doing anything different. I think they're probably going to make it all the same and hope we think it goes away. <laughs> plan was to always solicit input to our community before any updates to OGL on our drafts you've seen we're attempting to do that okay the president the CEO of Kickstarter saw him and he pretty well confirmed him he did not say they were drafted or they were seeking out any kind of feedback I think he would have mentioned that and of course they have a paragraph of oh thank you for your feedback um, and they, you know, that's pretty well how they parted. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Talk about a double backpedal. Man. That one takes, that, that's a, I've not seen many backpedals that go that far before, but that is a good one. Uh, what, what does this all mean? As I keep rambling on for time on end, <laughs> it means has frozen some shit, dude um <laughs> this was a pr nightmare um and they got rag dragged through the coals for a week and a half doo doo, and the lack of response man that hurts too i mean when you're sitting there and you got a bonfire and you're just going twiddling your thumbs yeah that doesn't go over too well with fans that just makes them think oh shit they're right oh shit what are we doing and you know what yeah that's what we've been doing and i don't i gotta say i don't believe any of this is like sincere or real or anything like that now they're probably going to do some changes because they got freaked out over a way people were jumping off of indie beyond but i think the damage is done and in the end of this i saw i saw a funny thing um from a double crit fail and it was content creators in the Avengers uh, endgame thing and I'm looking at it going dude Articulated Ninja did that already 
in relation to the HasLab and Ghost Rider, and I'm like sitting here going, wait a minute. D&D dudes, magic dudes, and action figure dudes need to join forces against Hasbro. That should be the video next. Somebody needs to cut that video together. Uh, you know, just all the content creators from all of them. And just like, you know, going after Hasbro. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, Hasbro, you are screwing up so royally. So, with all that in mind, the, Hasbro's got some major issues to get past. I, and I'm, I'm at my fill with Hasbro. I really am. I, I'm, you know, if I see something I like, I buy it. If I don't, I pass it. A lot of what I've been grabbing for Marvel Legends has been rebuilding my old collection. I am pretty close to that. I'm going to grab Orb because I was just a guy I never thought I would see in action figure form, to be perfectly honest. Okay, you got my attention there. I know I'm grabbing Wonder Man. I know I'm grabbing some figures, and, you know, I don't think they can get me out of it all the way. Um... But, you know, my, my buying's going down, and really, I mean, a lot of it's been second-hand market anyway, so it's not a big deal. Whereas, you know, a lot of people are buying whole waves, and that's dwindling, so what's going to happen now with the action figure side? This is getting interesting, guys, and, you know, I, I'm sitting here thinking of <laughs> retroblasting. Retroblasting needs to needs to do some research and do this because god i bet you michael can make it funny as hell um, <laughs> you know it, and there's a whole other thing about masters of the universe i need to get into that i will get into later but D, &D had to hit this now be relevant be with it okay um gosh there's too much shit going on lately <laughs> okay uh yeah, just just wanted to give you a lowdown and give you some of my thoughts. I just could not help but be a smartass during that D and D post. It was just terrible. I'll link it in the description that way you guys can follow it. But uh, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, I'm also going to put in the links for uh, Devil Crit Fail and Articulating Ninjas uh, takes uh, on the Avengers scene. Uh, Articulating Ninjas is a little longer, but uh, it's at the end of the video. But it's pretty cool too. So that's going to be it for uh, infinite realms right now don't forget to like and subscribe